Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. In this special episode, we're celebrating the success of the Hawaiian voyaging canoe, Hokulea, and her unprecedented worldwide voyage. We'll hear about the canoe's adventures and talk to crew members about the journey, what they anticipated, and what surprised them. The resurgence of ancient voyaging and navigation has helped revive indigenous traditions, language, and culture throughout the world. We'll learn about the equipment, materials, and crew members on board to see what makes each canoe unique. First, we check out the Hawaiian voyaging canoe, Hokulea. Hokulea was built in Honolulu and first sailed in 1975. She has since sailed over 150,000 nautical miles and is currently undertaking an unprecedented worldwide voyage that began in 2013. Navigator Kaiolani Murphy brought me on board while the canoe was docked on Kauai. Well, Kaiolani, it's so good to be here and um, get to talk about the Hokulea and the Polynesian Voyaging Society. I'm very honored that you're allowing us to come and speak with you and to tour. Thank you so much. Oh, it's good to have you guys. <laughs> Thank you for coming and for your interest in sharing with Hokulea. And so my understanding is that you're one of the navigators and captains. I think I'm a student of both, yep. <laughs> I've been with Hokulea for the last like 13 years now. So it's been kind of a big part of my, my life. And you're planning to be aboard the entire journey? I've been asked if I could do the, the whole journey and as long as I can, you know, take care of things Every crew member has to make sure that everything's pono at home before they go. So um, definitely would be honored and excited to do that, that whole thing. Um, but I think we'll, we'll kind of have to take it a year at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and how long will it take you to um, circumnavigate the world? Well, our sail plan would get us um, leaving, leaving Hawaii 2014 May and then we wouldn't be back in Hawaii until 2017. Oh my so goodness. actually like four years of, of sailing, or actually of being away from home, um, but maybe a third of that is actually sailing. You know, parts of the world will be waiting out the right season to be on the water. This um, theme of this upcoming voyage is Malama Honua, and it's really, at the root of that, it's taking care of our earth, our island earth. Um, beginning with our own home, so Malama Hawaii, that's something we've always tried to do and, and live by. Um, the values of, the, of this place, of, of the canoe that we live by, you know, taking care of the canoe is like taking care of an island, the islands that we live on, and then this larger island earth. So at the very core of this voyage, it's really, you know, trying to bring people together who are doing awesome things to take care of our home and not just our home Hawaii, but then our, you know, our home planet. Crew members on the Hokulea are all volunteers, sacrificing their lives to be part of the journey. Ka'iolani shares the stories that inspired her to choose this difficult but remarkable path. How did you become involved in, mm. well, with the Hokulea, but then also in becoming a navigator? I guess for my, my introduction to the canoe, I mean, when I was in elementary school, the canoe, kind of like what we're doing now, Hokula had come to the Big Island, that's where I'm from, Waimea, and our class got to go on like a field trip and got to go visit the canoe. And I was just, you know, so stoked and amazed and just thought like, wow, this is, you know, um, it was just huge to me, but it wasn't something that I thought like I could do, you know? And so it wasn't really until I was at college at UH Manoa when um, Nainoa, Thompson gave a talk at uh, Kamakakuo Kalani, the whole Center for Hawaiian Studies. And I, was, I, I went to that presentation and I was just so like, you know, his talks are really inspiring and just tells you stories that are just like kind of pulls you in. And when I saw that he was going to teach a class at Hawaiian Studies, I signed up for it because his name was in the schedule of classes, which is a very good strategy. Because <laughs> he didn't actually teach the class when I was taking it. But, um, I had a great teacher, Lily Kalaka Melehiva. She had voyaging experience. And it was really by taking that class that kind of opened the door to get me involved. Hokula was in dry dock that 
fall and spring semester, and then we got to um, do sea trials to Molokai. And I didn't get sick, and most of the class did, so I think that's why they asked me if I wanted to help with like a summer program. And I've been with the Voyaging Society ever since. So it's start. I mean, just started out as just being really interested and in, in, you know, just being inspired by those stories and and wanting to learn more and learn from him. And so by taking the class, I, I was able to get kind of the real basics of the navigation. You know, we learned the stars and and all of that. And then by continuing on with um, with PVS and and kind of being hooked in, sa in on sailing with Hokulea, I got to learn more from Nainoa. So he, he kind of mentored me along his own preparation for the Rapa Nui voyage because I was working working with him and, and helping him get ready, you know, just by organizing his books and everything, but he was he would mentor me along the way. To me, it's it's a real, I mean, it's such a privilege. It, it is a kuleana in that sense of the, the word um, privilege is a kuleana too that you know, we get to go on these voyages and, you know, there may be 20, 100 people that want to be there in that spot that you have the opportunity to be in. So what is our give back? Yeah, and so I've been lucky to be able to teach now at the Honolulu Community College, teach voyaging classes there, kind of the classes that I took. <laughs> but, um, you know, doing things like this when we go around our islands and sharing with keiki.com, you know, maybe you're, you're going to inspire the next sailor, captain, navigator. So it's really, you know, have the opportunity to go on a voyage. It's, it's really about sharing what we're, you know, what we had the privilege to learn along the way. And so is this a, a career that you have? Um, like, I know you're going to have to be away and you're not able, you're teaching at Honolulu Community College, but you're, I imagine, not able to have a full-time job as you're sailing for yeah. months at a time right yes yeah. so it's funny a lot of sailors end up leaving their jobs so that they can go on a voyage you want to be working with uh, an organization or you know group that that understands the value of the canoe and what, what the canoe stand for but yeah so like for myself I hope I don't I don't have to quit but I, I would um, you know just try to take leave so that I can be gone for you know a month or five or you know year <laughs> and um, no, everybody that goes on on voyages are, are volunteering, so it's it is kind of a challenge and try to figure out like how, you know, how could we how could it make work, you know, at the different ports that we're going to. I think part of it is just trying to tie into places that we can get resources from to be able to, you know, sustain some of us that are going to be on the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the main part of the canoe that we would actually steer from is uh -huh. near the near the back, so if we can move aft. So yeah, this is our steering sweep, our hoi uli. And basically you're either, you can grab a hold if you'd like, you're oh, either wow. gonna pull it to one side or the other. So when you've got it all the way to the starboard side, then the canoe will, will go in kind of the opposite direction, go towards port. And so I guess it's like a rudder or a tiller. It's quite heavy. Yeah, it is. In rough weather, you know, sometimes three, four people may be trying to, oh, sorry, trying to battle with this. <laughs> Are all the crew members then trained on how to steer? Yeah, part of crew training is, you know, everybody has to steer, except, like I said, the, the navigator or the captain. Uh -huh. um, but everyone that's on watch will, this is kind of one of the main, the main things that you're going to have to do. So it really helps if the steersman is on it, you know, like if, if they have a good feel for the canoe, uh -huh. um, because if the steering is not so straight, then it makes it harder for the navigator to try to go back and think like, okay, we went, you know, we were kind of going all over the place, so where, where are we, that kind of thing. So when you give a direction to the crew in terms of uh, navigation, how do you express that? We, a lot of the terms we use are relative to the wind. Uh -huh. So we might tell the steersman, okay, steer up, which means steer towards the wind. And then we'll tell them, okay, take a mark. So when, it, when they're standing here on the sweep, they're gonna look around the, the horizon and it could be in front or behind. And maybe it's a cloud during the day, it's hard uh -huh. if there's no landmarks, right? But maybe it's a cloud that's far away. And when the navigator says, take a mark, 
you're going to try to stay on that course. Uh -huh. So if you get off course, it's okay, I'm going to give you a new mark, or if you're changing where you want to go. Personally for you, what do you think is the most challenging aspect? One, it's staying awake, um, especially, you know, you get between the hours of like 3 and 5 a.m. or 2 and 5 a.m. and that's times when you just want to close your eyes and go to sleep. Um, but between that and then just the, the changing parts of like the, the weather and, and being able to read the swells. Um, to me, like I still feel like even, I've been on several voyages, but I still feel like, you know, any time I get to spend on the ocean is, is good learning for me because I still need to understand and, and build my relationship with being able to read the, the surface of the water. Because sometimes on, you know, a, a cloudy night or during the day, sun's high, that's all you have to, to rely on is, is the ocean surface. The University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program. Helping coastal communities of Hawaii and the Pacific. Through research, education, and outreach. Serving the community, from elementary to graduate students. Hawaii Sea Grant. Welcome back. Next, we're at the Molama Honua Celebration at Magic Island in Honolulu. For three years, the historic Polynesian voyaging canoe Hokulea sailed around the world without maps or compasses, using ancient wayfinding techniques to guide her. During the voyage, over 200 volunteer crew members helped to sail the canoe. Known as Malama Honua, to care for our island earth, the worldwide voyage visited over 150 ports, celebrating indigenous cultures and traditional knowledge, while inspiring people to better manage their resources and confront global challenges. The Hokulea was joined by voyaging canoes from throughout Polynesia and Micronesia as she sailed into Magic Island. The crew was greeted by a huge celebration with over 50,000 people from around the world and traditional arrival ceremonies not witnessed for hundreds of years. Following the homecoming celebration at Magic Island, the community joined the Polynesian Voyaging Society and celebrity guest speakers from around the world in a three-day Malama Honua Summit at the Hawaii Convention Center to learn, share, and explore the next step in the worldwide voyage. Sam Kapoi has been a crew member and media specialist for the Hokulea since 2002. Sam is also a member of Halemua o Maui a Akalana, a men's group from Waianae that carries on traditional Hawaiian practices. Sam and the Halemua performed the Kali'i Rite Ceremony as a first step of welcoming the Hokulea crew back to shore. Today, my role was to be the the champion or the representation of, of all the canoes and, and for our island. And basically the, the Kali'i ceremony, the rite of passage ceremony, uh, I was the one who caught the spears, uh, eight spears that, that came at me, one representing for each canoe. we haven't seen in hundreds of years. Yeah, the Kali is, is, has always been alive. Um, one of our, our teachers, Kayo Nakanelua from Maui, he has his, his Kali uh, group, 
that he trains kids up to adults and they've been practicing this this art for you know years the last time that someone did it with eight spears though uh, is kind of significant the ihe makavalu was done by you know the great one king kamehameha <laughs> We say ho manna, like all, all, everything that we do is to to either uh, give or elevate our mana as a people, yeah? And so if we can do stuff like this, uh, it's just raising the bar for the next generation to be better than us. The Kali ceremony is done as a rite of passage. When a canoe goes on on a voyage, that crew or canoe is is in the hands of Kanaloa and, and, or the hands of God, you know, however you want to look at it. But when they come back to this life, to this land, there's a little bit more control than out there, right? So with the rite of passage, with the Kali, it's, it's something to signify that, that you are human, yeah? you are a man, that you bleed. And so with, with the spears coming at you, uh, you know, the goal is to catch it. Uh, and at the same time, if you don't, then it's going to prove if you're a god or a man, right? And then, and then after the spears, then there's uh, another part of the ceremony that is done. The guys come up with their with their pahoas or their nevas, and they come up and touch you with the point of the their their tips of their weapons to 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 have that representation of you getting pierced. And so that is now everything is is all good. Then another another guy comes in and, and presents a, a certain type of, of maia or banana, uh, iholena or uh, popoulu. Today we use the iholena, and that was in in the old days during the kapu time, was was noah for all the the men and women. We could share that certain maia because most maia wasn't you know wasn't it was only the men, and so that maia is is given as a present for for everything to be all all noah and all I guess. Uh, I don't even know the English word for Noah, but everything is all good, basically. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that you would like to share or a feeling that you want to pass on? If you're watching this, I would want someone to to ho'omana. If, if there is something in your culture that needs to be brought back, uh, then do it. You know what I mean? That's, that's just what it is. That's how Hokulea started. And, and this voyage wasn't even about that. It was more about reconnecting with the world's people to see how we can take care of our earth, because there's only one. And so, um, yeah, if you can, whatever you can gain from this, I, I hope that's what you can do is perpetuate something from your culture that would home on a, yourself and your, your, your people. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Next, we catch up with Kaiulani Murthy, Hokulea navigator from Hawaii Island. We first talked with Kaiulani in October of 2013 when Hokulea was preparing for the worldwide voyage. Now that Hokulea is home, Kaiulani's excitement about the journey's purpose is as powerful as ever. It's really exciting that Hokulea is home again. You know, it's been a long time that she's been away from home, so it's awesome, nice to be, be back home. And like, I know it was saying as we're coming in, you know, we're now we're bringing Hokulea back home to Hawaii's children. And it's awesome to see how many people came out to, to welcome the canoes back too. I feel really privileged to have been able to do the, the legs of the voyage that I did, um, three of them in the Pacific. Also getting to check out the East Coast of America for 
a few weeks too. So that was that was a different kind of voyage. It was a real coastal kind of stuff, but connecting with the with the native peoples of that place, that was you know that was also an incredible experience. The first leg I did was to going to Tahiti, and then after that I went from Samoa to Tonga to Aotearoa. And then even this last trip coming home from Tahiti, we get to see those southern stars that we don't see home here. So a lot of those stars that are, you know, closer to the south celestial pole that um, they're bright stars, but we never see them here. So it's just getting used to um, being able to use those for this, you know, same way we would use stars here in the in the northern hemisphere. So every voyage that we get to do, even with Cole, like we had Bruce Blankenfeld on board, just accelerates the learning from, you know, what they've. Um, what they've been able to teach us and then spending the time on the water with them um, that's really that's really important while they're still while they're still sailing next Polynesian voyaging society crew member Matt Kars is on board the Hokulea telling us what surprised him most on the journey honestly I think it's just a the connection that around the world that people felt with the canoe. I mean, we're just the crew members. We're we're here to help. She's the she's the star. They just grab people, animals, even the wet. Everything just gravitates towards Hokulea, Hikianalea, and the other va'a from the Ohana va'a. And it's just it's, it's electric. I haven't been able to process it yet, and just it's just an overwhelming sense of pride in my heart for it's not just um, you know our. Hawaiian, native Hawaiian people, but it's, I think, pride for Hawaii, the Pacific, everyone who lives in this realm, and um, to be able to kind of make this connection with how things were, but it's not just, it's not static in the past, it's it's a living history and it's living culture, and so just seeing the people being excited to be a part of voyaging and understanding who they are and wanting to be a part of it, it's a blessing. So, we, and we wouldn't have been here without you know, our elders, when we're out there sailing, it was not just the seen, the elders who are seen, but those unseen, and that was really special. Next, we meet with Polynesian Voyaging Society Chief Operations Officer and crew member Heidi Kai Guth. Heidi's role on land is to arrange logistics for the worldwide voyage. Heidi tells us which legs of the voyage she was on board for. I got to voyage from uh, Tahiti throughout the Society Islands to the Cook Islands to American Samoa and then from Brazil to the Virgin Islands which is where I grew up so that was really neat to be able to sail home and then along the New England seaboard from Rhode Island up to Maine and then just most recently from Rapa Nui to the Marquesas with a pit stop in Pitcairn and onto Tahiti. What surprised me most was how genuinely kind and helpful the maritime community is around the world. Um, it, it's just been really heartwarming, especially the indigenous communities around the world. We had hoped to be able to connect with them, but the outcome was far greater and far more inspiring than we had expected. Thank you to all of Hawaii for supporting us. It's been a really long and arduous journey for everyone, but we felt the wind behind us from Hawaii in our sails and on our decks. Your mana powered us around and brought us home, and we couldn't be happier than to be with you right now. Congratulations. <laughs> Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. University of Hawaii's Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii's Sea Grant.